Hey, I just jumped out of the shower and the shower in the bathroom I find is a really great place to contemplate. And I like to put on cool spiritual music while I do it, which I'm gonna continue to play for this video, some S Raj. And this video will be a two part or a two point video to help point towards your true nature. And the first part is just more on destiny, more on the preordained nature of the dream. And while we get hung up on this, <clears throat> when we truly drop into the understanding of non-duality, that there is only one, then nothing is really happening and nothing can be controlled and nothing that occurs is doing anything other than sitting still and motionless at its point in the infinite field of possibilities and being made manifest through the mechanism of dreaming in the mind of God, in the mind of you. So you might then say, well, why do you make these videos then? Like, who are these videos for if there's only one person? And I've seen other people tackle this topic too. And the simple answer is, I don't really have a say in it even though it could seem like I do, and you might think that I do, and I even can feel like I do. If I feel like I do, that's destiny. Consciousness likes to play games with itself, and one of those is awakening to itself in seeming stages, wherein it is aware of truth, and yet continues to engage in untruth. It's aware of non-duality, but it continues to engage in duality. And why it does that? There's all kinds of reasons you could come up with, but none that will ever be able to accurately describe it because it's infinite. But a few off the top would be because it's bored, <clears throat> because it's clever, because it likes to play games, because it's a trickster, it loves mystery, it's mystical. And so it makes us feel like we have control. It makes us believe that we can manipulate life or if we're to this stage where we understand that life is just a dream, it makes us believe that we can man manipulate the dream. <coughs> you know, we've had these, these lucid experiences where we start managing our dreams. And so we think, oh, I've got, I've got control over this, but that's just destiny playing itself out. So that's part one. Part two is really more what I wanted to focus on, which is what I was experiencing in the bathroom and what will I think point very nicely to your true nature. And that is to explore and investigate the way that we imagine time, that we dream time. And this really exposes the profundity of God. If you think about it, what made me think of this was I was, I was, uh, we're almost out of the bar of soap in the shower and we're almost out of toilet paper. And so I was like, oh, we need to go to the store. And I was thinking about just how many bars of soap and how many rolls of toilet paper we go through. We, we're not excessive, but you know, we go through them. And I was thinking about how we dream this. We dream that, oh, and I wanted to add this piece to at the beginning, shoot. What I wanted to say is that here I am dreaming about making a video about dreaming. It sounded cooler when I thought of it the first time. But anyway, we imagine ourselves going through these things. We imagine 
ourselves getting older. We imagine day and night. We imagine the, you know, the hours passing by. We wake up in the morning and it's bright and light out. Everything's fresh and new. And you know, there's a real distinct feeling and sense that we get at that time of the day. And then there's a real distinct sense that we get at around like 10 a.m. And then another one at noon and another one every single minute of the day. Even though every single day is different, nothing is ever repeated because it's infinite, it doesn't need to be. But there's still this continuity, this repeating that we dream. And, you know, then we dream of night. We dream of the week, the weekdays. And there's definitely a different feeling Monday through Friday than there is on the weekend, am I right? You know, there is for me. I love the weekend, even though at this point, I'm employed doing God's work. So every day is the weekend or every day is the weekday. Every day is a work day. Every minute of every day is a work day in my father's business. And uh, so then we dream of the seasons. We dream of people coming and going, living and dying, rolls of toilet paper running out, filling up the fridge and emptying it out, moving to different places, experiencing all of this coming and going and filling and emptying and living and dying, creating and destroying. And all along, it just sort of appears and then disappears. We go into the bathroom and the bar of soap is wherever it's at. We use it. We don't sit and watch and, and monitor its, its, you know, wear. The next time we go in, it's just subtly less, not enough to even notice. But after a week or so or a couple weeks, it's getting smaller. And when we leave the bathroom, it vanishes. We're dreaming something else. We're dreaming the living room now. We're dreaming using the cinematic feature on the iPhone to film today. And then eventually we'll dream that the bar of soap is just that thin little flaky thing. We try to push through the drain with our, with our toes and then add it to the grocery list. But all along, we're just there, just aware. It appears in our mind, we mess around with it, and it disappears. And it's not as though we mess around with it in some static format. It's always this forward moving experience. It's always this sort of evolving experience. And that's what we do. We're here and our mind is just ever evolving. Things are appearing, evolving, disappearing, and we're bringing them back. They're, little, they're still, they're different though this time, but it's still kind of the same thing, and then it's gone. And what's so mysterious about this is as you start to contemplate deeply on it and you know, really sit with the I am, really be the one that is aware, the one that cannot be found, but can very much be experienced, can very much be known, it's very much what you are and everything else is not what you are or as much what you are as you are your dreams. But you begin to contemplate that if we dream this, then we should be able to dream people back from the dead. We should be able to dream ourselves reversing an age. We should be able to, you know, dream the toilet paper roll staying the same every time we go in the bathroom. But to do that would defy infinite order. To do that would defy mechanisms that can't even begun to be understood, but can be contemplated. 
mechanisms where if we just had everything the way we wanted it all the time, it would completely lose its sweetness. We wouldn't appreciate it at all. I have this little anecdotal story that I wrote called, a little parable called the story of the instant winner. And it goes, there once was an instant winner. They won everything in an instant, the end. Boring story, right? Because there's nothing to it. They got everything they wanted. There was no challenge, no adversity, nothing to have to work through to get to the prize at the end, making the prize so sweet. So these limitations we put on ourselves, these dream limits, these dream expirations, these rules that cause chaos and destruction and creation and, and birth, life and death, they are what give rise to this world. And so as we start to bend them, it's like a butterfly effect. It's like back to the future. Marty goes back and messes with the future. I think it's Marty, right? Yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. And then he messes with the past and it throws off the future in a major way, the ripple effect. God's dream has deep, deep, deep systematic order to it and to tinker with it has major ramifications but then not really because it's just playing out the way it's playing out it's the infinite and so every experience will be experienced is being experienced it's all sitting in the infinite field nothing's being experienced Yet it all is just appearing, dreaming about it, disappearing. New dream, new dream, new dream. No time, just now, but the appearance of an evolving, forward moving sequence of events when upon deeper investigation reveals that nothing is ever the same as it was and time isn't real. Look forward to catching up with you next time. Next time. Peace.